Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Baraka Tayahawa, Baraka Tayahawa Shai. What you're looking at is a painting of a chariot up here in the clouds with rays coming down. And this is supposed to be like a depiction of the children of Israel. Which we know who the children of Israel are. So called Negroes, Latinos and Native American Indians. And um, the name of this lesson is called Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Now I was watching a video that the elders Yashawamba and Barakala from a uh, from um Dallas I'm sorry from um LA <clears throat> did it was a uh, like an in transit type thing and um brothers were getting down uh, I'm not sure what channel it was on I think it was probably GMS Sharmoth or Sharmoth Bar which one of them <clears throat> and um they were going into pretty much into the name of the Lord and um you know, brothers were getting down, you know, bringing out about the name of the Lord. So I had the video playing and um, it inspired me to to uh, do, a, do a lesson on it because I thought about there. Here it goes right here. I thought about um, I thought about, you know, the, the, the uh, song Swing Low Sweet Chariot coming forth to carry me home. And um, as I was meditating on that, while the brothers were going into their thing, um, it you know it, it 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 dawned on me at that moment, you know that, you know we which we we already knew this that 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 uh, the southern tribe that was here, this uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and mainly a uh, uh, majority being Judah, you know, and whatever other tribes were there with them. When they were in slavery, they when they first came over here, they understood, you know, that uh, they understood that they were Israelites, you know. But in process of time, the devil Esau, the so-called white man, beat that out of them, separated the families, and retaught everybody, you know. And pretty much to what you have today, a bunch of demoralized. Uh, um, Degenerate plants of a of a of a of a strange vine unto the Lord, you know, and um, when you when you read the lyrics of this song, they're they're heavily spiritual, which I have a site here encyclopedia.com. It says geographically the land of Africa or spiritually the peace of heaven to this day swing low sweet chariot has remained popular, performed by gospel singers throughout the world imbuing audiences with religious spirituality and this is the text right here it says swing low sweet chariot which we know according to the scriptures that the chariots are the so-called ufos matter of fact let's go to uh i believe well that's actually dealing with the cloud um let me see something psalms 104 and 3 i believe that's dealing with the cloud uh, Psalms 104 and 3 Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters Who maketh the clouds his, clouds his chariot Who walketh upon the wings of the wind Who maketh his angel spirits his ministers of flame and fire So pretty much These uh, uh, chariots Which are vehicles of the Lord Are sometimes known as clouds Whirlwinds You know chariots The chariots of Israel Flying roll, you know, there's different there's different names for it in the Bible. Now let's see what the word chariot here is. Okay, raka rakawab. Rakawab. Chariot. Doesn't really go or says a vehicle. See? As written on chariot. So it's a vehicle. See? Vehicle chariot. So this vehicle are the transportation of the angels you know and jake during the time of slavery they understood that they understood that that was his deliverance and the salvation that that uh would would lead them 
back to to the homeland. You know, this is Second Kings two, and I'll start at uh, ten. And he said, "Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, this is a." Uh, Elijah and Elisha speaking, you know, and at this moment here, this is Elisha, I'm sorry, Elijah speaking to Elisha because Elisha asked for a double portion of his spirit. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. See, this chariot of fire was a so-called UFO. And the reason why they call it the chariots of fire is because you would have lights that would come out of the chariots, you know, and it would look like it was fire, but it was really, you know, the lights from the chariots, you know, from the so-called UFOs. It says, and horse and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. Now that that what parted them asunder was what Esau calls a tractor beam. You know, I don't know if I'll be able to find a picture of that. Track the beam. Let's see, images. Uh, pretty much right here. You can see it right here. This this also, that's like a tractor beam right here. You know, so this tractor beam or this, this uh, light came down and separated Elijah from Elisha. You know? As you can see, there's there's different ones, you know, if you look through it. These are just drawings, of course, but these are things that people have seen, you know. They're, they're drawings, but these are things that people have seen, and, th and this is how Elijah was pretty much abducted into the chariot of the Lord and brought up into heaven where he didn't see death. Um, so going back, uh, where are we? To Second Kings, it says, and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. See, sometimes it's called a whirlwind. Now, this wasn't an actual whirlwind, but it was it was an actual chariot. And the reason why they named it a whirlwind is because of the way the chariots were spinning. You know, it says, and Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. See, so these chariots of Israel are what? The salvation of the nation of Israel. And the horses thereof mean in the power, you know, and the horsemen represent the angels, which are gu the guiding force inside of these chariots. It says, and uh, you, you could read about that in the book of Ezekiel, the first chapter. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. All right, so it says, swing low, sweet chariot. Why did the slaves want the, the chariot? Because they would see the chariots when they were... um. Out there on the in the cotton fields, you know, working, you know, in in uh, in the, pretty much in hardcore slavery in hell, you know, and they would see the chariots and they would pray to the Lord to send the chariots down. It says, "Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forward to carry me home." In other words, come down, you know. I see you. Come on down and grab me up and bring me back home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forward to carry me home. I looked over Jordan and what did I see coming for to carry me home? A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. So they were pretty much praying to Yahweh, Bashem Shai, to send the chariots down to pick them up. But the problem was that they didn't know the name of the Lord at that time. No, because everything, everything started being stripped away from Jake. You know, so they didn't understand that they weren't going to be delivered at that time. Because first and foremost, prophecy had to be fulfilled. You know, they had to be brought here and serve a sentence. And second of all, they didn't have the name of the Lord. You know, because that was that is a very key ingredient in this truth is the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty, verse four. It says, "Who hath get, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended?" Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? So these are very key ingredients that are very important to your salvation. You know, knowing those names because the first thing that Yahweh Shai did 
when it came on the scene was pretty much give the name of the Most High to the uh, disciples. This is John 17 and 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they, they have kept thy word. See, so the the name of the Lord is very important. And and in the min in this in this ministry that we have, this profession that the Lord gave us, we we have to push and propagate those names. Now the uh, spirit got on Apostle Tahar this past uh uh weekend when we were on our way uh in transit doing an in transit show and um he mentioned that you know we have to include the holy spirit you know in to the blessing and it's true because a part of uh, uh of this truth is the father the son and the holy spirit as we're going to read you know it says, this is matthew 28 and I started at 18. And Yahweh came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why? Because he fulfilled his mission. You know? This is after he came back to the disciples. This is after the crucifixion. And the power was given unto him. Why? Because he conquered and fulfilled and finished the work that the Most High gave him. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, because you had Israelites that were scattered throughout all these nations. And we have to keep mentioning that because you have these wacky Christians that try to use scriptures like this to incorporate all people. When the Lord never incorporated all people into this, just the nation of Israel. And those Israelites that were scattered abroad that lost their way. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the blessing should go as the Pastor went into is uh, uh, um, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, Barakata, you know, pretty much. So the, the name of the Father, the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit bless you, you know. So it should be um, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Barakatah, you know, in the name of the, fa the, the Father, in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit, bless you, you know, <clears throat> and that's very important because these names are very key to our salvation, you know, and there's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved except in the name of, of Yahweh Shai. This is Acts 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel. That by the name of Yahweh Shai, Hamashayak of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was, which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Why? Because they were building the nation of Israel, but without the, the key element, the cornerstone, which is Yahweh Shai. So that's why that whole thing fell apart because it was not built upon the right uh, foundation. It was built upon sand. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You know, and these names are very key in the Hebrew language. And it's not that hard. <clears throat> Nobody ever said that, that you have to be an expert in the Hebrew language to be saved. But these are games that these guys at IUIC play. You know, they say, well, look, you guys said that you have to know all of the Hebrew in order to be saved. We never said that. And we repeat it over and over again. But no matter how many times we repeat it, they keep saying the same thing. Because the, the their their message is to the the uh, zombies out there, the, un, uh, uh, the unknowing, you know, souls out there that don't know what's going on. And they'll hear that. And that, yeah, man, fuck that, man. Hebrew, you know, because they, 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 their hearing is selective, you know. <clears throat> but you do not have to be an expert in the Hebrew to be saved or delivered. But you do need to know these names in their proper language, because that's the the uh, language that these names were given in. <clears throat> and then, when you go back 
uh, to this, this song here, Swing Low Sweet Chariot, the, the slaves that were here, which are Israelites, or were Israelites, were crying unto the Lord to, say, to save them. But the Lord didn't. Why? Because they were not calling on His name. See? Now let's get into it. Um, um, matter of fact, let me read this. And then there's a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to read some of it, Lord's will. Um, but I'm going to jump back up after I read the... the, the, the I'm going to read it again. Swing low, sweet chariot, come forth to carry me home. Swing, uh, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming forth to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming forth to carry me home. If you get it, if you get it there bef before I do, coming forth to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm coming too, coming forth to carry me home. Now they have different opinions of what this means, but we here, you know, at Great Millstone, understand what this means this was the the slaves which are israelites crying unto the lord to deliver them you know and to bring them back to jerusalem bring them back to the land of israel over there in the middle east which is our home you know as it tells you in the book of galatians the fourth chapter you know jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all you know but the reason why the lord did not deliver them at that time was because they weren't calling on the name you know, outside of, of the Most High uh, 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 fulfilling His word by, by the prophecies of, of Jake, uh, Jake being brought uh, into captivity by slave ships, you know. But if they had all turned to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord, the Lord would have, you know, would have uh, saved all of Israel because the Lord said that, you know. And Lord's what we're going to get to that. All right, so this is the book of First Kings the 8th chapter, the 46th verse. And I'm going to jump around a little bit in this chapter. I'll try to get through as much of it as I can. I don't want to make this too long, but, you know, I'll go in the spirit. And uh, this is what prompted, you know, when I thought about that. Or when I Actually, when I saw the video and I thought about the song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, coming forth to carry me home. And it clicked. I said, yeah, see, the Lord didn't deliver Jake back then because they didn't know the name. And that's why if you go through all of our pages... Uh, uh, the, one of the main things we teach about is the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, and then the next, or, 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 or right there with it is uh, the, the uh, Mark of the Beast, which is a so-called microchip. You know, those are like the two main topics that we always go into over and over again. You know, the Gentile issues and other issues, but those are the name and, and, uh, uh, and the Mark of the Beast, which is a microchip. Those are some of the main things that we go into. So when I when I thought about that song, I said I want to I want to do an in transit, <clears throat> in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on it. But uh, you know the spirit allowed me to do it this morning. All right. Matter of fact, today is uh, uh, um, November twenty seventh, two thousand seventeen. All right. So let's get into it. First Kings eight forty six. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. And this is far. You know, even though this used to be the land of, of, of other Israelites. You know, the, the uh, Gadites, the Reubenites, the Issacharites. Salaki brothers. It, it, it became the land of the enemies by the time Jake reached these soils. Esau had already been... Governing over these lands So it says If they sin Against thee For there is no man that sinneth not And thou be angry with them And deliver them to the enemy So that they carry them away Captives unto the land of the enemy Far or near Which just as far Yet if they bethink themselves In the land where they were Carried captives Now the word bethink Means to return From the Hebrew word Shawab Yet if they shall bethink Shawab that's what the, a word that's used for convert also. So shawab is to return, turn back, turn back, return. In other words, to go back or to return where where you came from. You know, the status that you had before. And, and who was that? That's referring to the nation of Israel because you cannot return to something that you were never a part of to begin with. 
All right, so that's what the whole grafting in was about in the book of uh, Romans, the 11th chapter. There was the Israelite foreigners that lost their way that were being brought back in, were being shown mercy because the Most High had put them out of his sight, meaning that he put them out of, out of, out of his, uh, the land that he chose you know, for our forefathers. So it says, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent, you no, know, meaning go back to penance, you know, be be remorseful or sorrowful for the things that they did, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives here in America. They were singing, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming forth to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming forth to carry me home. Coming forth to carry me home where? Back to the land of Jerusalem, of Israel. Because that's where Jake came from and they understood that. But the key element they didn't have was the name of the Lord. And that's why it's so important. What they did have was plantation Christianity as Apostle Tahar coined it. You know, with the picture of sweet Jesus in their mind. Thinking that that was what was going to deliver them. You know, they didn't have the, the image of the Most High as a, as a, uh, uh, as a so-called Negro. And the image of Yahweh Shai as a so-called Negro. You know, and the angels. You know, but you do have these pictures here of, of chariots or UFOs in the Bible. And I'm um, trying to see if I can find some more. This is another one here. Even though this is like a Renaissance art, but even during the Renaissance period, they understood about, you know, the, uh, the chariots <clears throat> in the Bible. You know, and they, they would paint them, you know. And they understood that these were, were the, the salvation of the nation of Israel. You know, here goes a whole bunch of them. This is from different ones. There was another painting. I'll try, here it goes right here. The second one. It's a lot better. You can see it right here. There's an actual chariot in this painting. And this is a Renaissance picture painting. But you have other paintings that go back further that that also have the pictures of the so-called ufos or chariots all right so the reason why the lord didn't save jake back then is because they didn't have the name it says um and make supplications unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive saying we have sinned and have done perversely we have committed wickedness and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hadst chosen, thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And as you read above this, you know, and below, you know, certain places, the uh, criteria or the uh, key that they needed. Was the name of the Lord. I'm trying to see if I could find a couple. Um, just bear with me. Uh, 33rd verse. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy. Because they have sinned against thee. And shall turn again to thee. And confess thy name. See. So the key thing is confession of the name of the Lord. You know, which is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. You know, those are the key elements because the Most High gave a mediator uh, 2,000 years ago to be a go-between or a lawyer for us because we're, we're, not, we're not clean enough to come before the Most High. So through Yahweh Shai, we are cleansed. And that's how our sacrifices are acceptable unto the Most High Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. You know, for us. Okay? So that was it. You had to confess the name of the Lord and pray and make supplications unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. You know? And this is this is what, like I said, prompted this whole lesson because it was a spirit that tapped, tapped me in the head with this. You know? And then I, I made a mental note of it. I, I looked up a few things. And, um... Here it is. All right. Now, 
I'm going to read this real quick because I want to jump up. I want to jump up uh, to the first verse of the of 1 Kings 8 chapter to show you that this is only for Israel. And even though you have, uh, even though you have, um, it mentions the strangers in here, but those strangers are Israelites that went astray. You know, that became strange like the heathen. You know, and it, it's all throughout the scriptures, you know, uh, about Israel going off, worshiping idols and becoming unclean. And then the Lord is is going said he was going to cleanse them, you know, and bring them back pretty much. Uh, so before I read that, this is Psalms 81. And uh, I'm going to just jump to the point because I want to close this lesson out. Um, it says Psalms 81 and 10. I am the Lord thy power which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice. And Israel were none of me. And that's the reason why we kept falling as a nation. Because the Lord would deliver us and then we would do some bullshit. And then the Lord would allow the enemies to, to, uh, uh, to destroy us. Put us in captivity. It says, therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. All right. It says, so I gave them up unto their own heart's lust and they walked in their own counsels. That's why when you read the book of Romans, the first chapter, this is a, a direct reflection of that. You know, because Jake was going off. The Lord gave him over to that reprobate mind, you know, to, uh, to, to the homosexuality and all of that. It says, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me that they would have listened and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. See, so the Lord would de would would overnight would take these devils down. But Jake ain't gonna do that, you know. And if Jake was to do that, then the Lord would be bound by His word, you know. But Jake is not gonna do that. It says the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto Him, but their time should have endured forever. That's why during the time. During his time here in slavery, Jake was not were not able to go back to the Lord because they didn't call on his name. Now, when you read First Kings eight one, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. So, and and pretty much these are the heads, the elders. You know, all the congregation of Israel, this this was for them. This wasn't for any other nation. Because only the, the children of Israel were called to this. The elders, the uh, the uh, priests, you know, all, all, the, uh, uh, all the Israelites. And this is a prayer for them. You know, this is a prayer for us, pretty much. Not for the other nations. You know, and Lord's will, in another lesson, I'll address the 41st verse on down, which goes into the stranger and all that. I got another precept. I want to go into the Lord's will if, after this lesson. If the Spirit is on me. I, I, I'll, I'll go over that lesson also. <clears throat> so pretty much that's it on that. Um, I just want to read a little bit of this and then I'll close the lesson out. All right. So Lord's will, I'm going to put this in the, in the uh, description box. It says, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot is an African-American spiritual, which is really an Israelite spiritual, also referred to as a Negro folk song. As a folk song, it is thought to have been created by a community rather than an individual. In this case, the community of African-American slaves prior to the Civil War. However, one song collector, John West, 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 Wesley, work in his book, Folk Songs of the American Negro, reported a legend that it was composed by Hannah Shepard of Tennessee in the mid-19th century. Work recounted that she created it in a dis desperate moment to so solace a distraught slave who had learned that she would be sold to another plantation and thus separated from their from their from her infant daughter. Regardless of whether it originated from one composer or from a whole community, Swing Low Sweet Chariot was a popular song sung throughout the South by slaves while they worked and during their occasional times of rest and prayer. The lyrics use biblical imagery and follow a slow, deep melody. They express the desire for a release from bondage and return to home. And that's talking about the, the home they're talking about was going back to the uh, land of Israel. You know, that's why, you know, because they'll, they'll try to make you think it's talking about Africa or, or heaven. But that's the reason why it, it, it mentioned the Jordan. The Jordan River is where? Let's, let's see. Jordan 
river map. The Jordan River is where? Over there in, in Jerusalem. In in the land of Israel. You got you got the Jordan River here, which is this is the land of Israel, Palestine, Jerusalem, you know, and then you have the uh the uh other side of the Jordan River, which are these lands which uh uh, the G Gad and Reuben and uh, Manasseh, half the tribe of Manasseh, got their inheritance on this side of the of, of the land, you know, and then the rest of the tribes got their inheritance over here. So this is the River Jordan that dumps off into the Dead Sea, you know, and then you have the Sea of Galilee above it, you know. But this is the River Jordan, and then it mentions it mentions the River Jordan, and then it also mentions a, a band of angels coming forward to carry me, you know, or coming after me. Coming for to carry me home because they understood that that was the deliverance of the nation of Israel, as we read in the book of Second Kings. And you can go through our many scriptures in the Bible dealing with um with the chariots, you know. Uh, so let's see. It says uh, they expressed a desire for a release from bondage and to and a return to home. Matter of fact, since I read that, let me get this scripture real quick. Isaiah fifty one. And uh, I'll start at 13. Matter of fact, I'll start at 12. I even, uh, Isaiah 51 and 12. I even I am he that comforteth you, who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and not, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass, and forgettest the Lord thy, thy maker. And uh, you have a lot of these so called uh, leaders in Israel today that know that they're Israelites. That are causing Israel to forget the Lord by saying that we don't know his name. His name is Most High and uh, Christ Bless. Uh, his name is Ahaya, Shai, or however they, they say it, you know, Yeshua and all that. These are all uh, are used to make Jake forget about their maker, you know, because the Most High is not going to hear you unless you call on his name, you know. Now, if you are a part of the elect, there's going to be a way for where, to where you're going to get that name. You're going to hear a man speaking somewhere, you know, teaching, and and, and which really you're going to mainly get it from, from the apostles and elders and men of Great Millstone. Because not, there's not really many other groups out there that really exalt the name like that, even though they know the name of the Lord. They don't really exalt the name of the Lord like that, like, like, the, like uh, Great Millstone does. And you're going to hear that name, and it's going to resonate with you. And it's not hard. All you got to do is mention the name and break the name down. You know? It's easy. But these guys are, are, are fighting hand and, and foot or hand and fist or however you say it to, to keep that covered. Because they're causing you to forget the Lord your maker. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth. And has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. As if he was ready to destroy. And where, and where is the fury of the oppressor? Because they can't destroy unless the Lord allows them to. Because to the Most High belong the issues from death. The Most High is the one that wounds. He's the one that heals. You know, he's the one that, that, that gives you up to slavery and delivers you. You know, and that's what we're waiting for right now. The deliverance uh, of, of, of our captivity here. And that's why we continually call on the name and do this work. Like the scripture say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Because after a certain point in time, when the Lord destroys his man by the word of his mouth, which is us out there speaking, he's going to destroy him, you know, with the, with the other part of it, which is Yahweh Shai and the, and the chariots and, and uh, 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 this nuclear destruction that's coming. It says, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose. That's why Jake was singing, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. It says, um, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Because in this society, our, our lives are not, are not um, um, guaranteed us. And that's part of the curse. He shall, he shall give us here a trembling heart. You know, you shall say, if it be the Lord's will, we make it to the evening. If it be the Lord's will, we make it to the morning. And that's pretty much where, the point that we're at. You know, you don't know if you're going to make it from one day to the next. You know, only through hope, prayer, and faith, you know, and, and, and the uh, gracious mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh do we make it from day to day. 
So as the captive exile hastened that he may be loose and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But what 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 did we hasten for? For the day of the Lord to come, so that he can deliver us and bring us back to our um back to the to, to our land. Okay? And th this is a very good chapter. Uh so it says they expressed the desire to for a release from bondage and to in a return to home geographically the land of Africa or spiritually the peace of heaven, which is bullshit. There ain't no goddamn land of Africa. It's going back to how the fuck they gonna say Africa. They didn't say here I looked over the, the, the Nile River. I looked over the Nile and what did I see? You know, I said I looked over Jordan. But that just shows you how 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 demonic these devils are. They'll put this stuff together thinking, you know, they'll throw they'll give you the truth. But then throw you off. Uh, the peace of heaven. Uh, to this to this day, swing low, sweet chariot has remained popular, performed by gospel singers throughout the world, imbuing audiences with religious spirituality. And it goes in through here, and it kind of breaks down. Matter of fact, I'm gonna read a little bit of this poem summary, line one, lines one through four. The first stanza consists of two repeated lines that introduce the main image of the poem, a chariot that de descends from the sky to carry the speaker home. Now, what the hell is that talking about? It's talking about the chariots, you know, the chariots of Israel, so-called UFOs. It says, for some singers and listeners, the chariot may represent the path to freedom offered by organized abolitionists through the Underground Railroad. See, now they're putting you back to sleep. No, the chariot from the sky represents just that, deliverance to the sky. And it mentions in here how Elijah was, was uh, uh, delivered. Elijah wasn't delivered to no goddamn underground uh, railroad. You know, he, was, he didn't uh, go to a, uh, a cave and, and there was a maze in the cave and he got away from his enemies out the other side. He was brought up into heaven. For others, it could symbolize a chariot of the Lord offering transportation for the soul to, the, to heaven. This interpretation has its origin in, in the Bible, which contain, contains descriptions of chariots used in war as well as to transport honored souls, such as the prophet Elijah to heaven. You know, and, and it says since the chariot in this song is sweet, it suggests a conveyance to heaven more than to battle in war. Psalm 68 in the Bible book of Psalms. Uh, for example, depicts God as having thousands of chariots, a sign of his power. Uh, uh, in addition to the imagery, here this stanza uses alliteration, the S in swing and sweet. Okay, so I mean, that's pretty much it, but the, that's the point. The point is that the Lord uses his chariots for deliverance, you know? And, um, and you, when, when, you, when, you, when you die, your, your body goes into the ground and the spirit just goes up to the most high, you know? But but this deliverance is going to be seen worldwide, you know, such as the deliverance that that uh, Elisha witnessed of his of his uh, 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 Lord Elijah, you know, and that's what the the, the uh, so called slaves were were uh, uh, crying for was the deliverance out of this this uh, captivity and this hell, you know. So I'm gonna put this in the description box. You know, like keep in mind, you know, with everything, these devils, they have you know their points, and then they. They'll give you the truth and then they'll put you back to sleep, you know. But brothers that that are that are uh, uh, have the ex senses exercised to discern both good and evil are able to go through here and pick out the meat and spit out the bones, you know. So, like I said, it's a lesson that I want to do. Uh, it's called "Swing Low, Sweet Chariot." This pretty much is a song of deliverance for Israel. But um, what happened was Jake didn't know the name of the Lord, and that's why the Lord didn't deliver him. You know, and then like I say, you type in UFOs in the Bible, you're gonna get a whole lot of different depictions <laughs> of uh of the chariots, you know, as you can see here in this one. You're gonna get a bunch of different uh depictions of chariots, you know, which are which are the vehicles of the most high. Uh and that's how you how we shine the angels are coming back to deliver us. So with that I hope you've been edified to the next time I say Shalom.